before. And after. Welcome back to Lundev YouTube channel. I have received many requests from everyone to create videos related to GSAP. So I created this video a scroll animation effect using GSAP on the topic of real estate. If everyone finds this video interesting and useful, please like and subscribe to the channel to continuously update interesting videos about web design and programming. I will continue to make videos about GSAP if the video has positive reactions. Thank you everyone, now let's get started. Here I have prepared a simple template. The image to create the scroll animation effect will be placed in the banner at the top of the page. And here is the image. If everyone thinks that with just this image we can create the effect at the beginning of the video, of course not. In fact, we already have many images representing many layers of the building. The problem is how to use these layers optimally. Normally people will use the position attribute in CSS to determine its position, but with this method, you will have a lot of difficulty in the responsive process on other screens. Instead, I will show everyone a tip, which is to use SVG. There are many tools that help you combine all images into one SVG image, such as Figma, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop. The special thing about using SVG in this case is that it will help the position of all the original images always be fixed at the position you have arranged, regardless of the screen size. Hearing this, many of you may think that now it has become a single SVG image, how can I create a scroll animation anymore? But in this video, nothing is impossible. My job now is to arrange the images on top of each other so that they are balanced. Notice that for each image I have carefully named it so that it is easy to distinguish. Now I move to the export area, select SVG. Here I will ask it to name the IDs for the elements according to the class name that I created. And here is the image that I downloaded. When you turn on the DevTool feature, you will be able to see that it is made up of many elements. Each element has its own ID, and it is our small layer image from before. That means that we can still manipulate the small images inside. So now, what I want to do is to put this SVG file into the website. For example, the banner is where I want to store it. I will create a background city element for it. For this type of exercise, we will not insert the SVG image like normal images but have to get the entire code of it and insert it here. Of course, we will not do it directly because it will make the HTML code very ugly. Instead, we will ask for the help of JavaScript. So now I will create a JavaScript file and embed it at the end of the body. In JavaScript, I will create a function load SVG to perform image data fetching. When the response is fetched, convert the response content to string and then insert that content into the element with ID background city. And don't forget to run the function load SVG. Now I will go to CSS and edit this interface a little bit. Background city will have the size to fit the device frame. If the SVG tag is larger than this frame, the part that falls outside will be cut off. The SVG tag will have the same size as its parent element which is the background city. Use object position because you want the element to always be in the center. At this point, everyone can easily see that even though the height is set to 100%, we still see that the image does not fill the element. Even using object fix cannot solve the problem because these methods can only solve normal images, but this is SVG. To solve this problem, we have to set the preserve e aspect radio value for SVG. With xmidimid, SVG will always be centered horizontally and vertically. Slice trims the SVG if the container size does not match the aspect ratio of the SVG. That is, does not distort the image but keeps the aspect ratio. Try to be very careful at this step because it is easy to make mistakes with capitalization. Once everything is ready, I will create a function satanimation scroll. This will be where I will create animations for the website. And finally, I will integrate GSAP to create animation. And scroll trigger to catch website scroll event. Everything is ready. Let's create animation. 
We will use GSAB's timeline to organize how the animation works. At a time if there is more than one element to be transformed, we will put them together in an add function. For example, at the start, I want to zoom in on this SVG. Within 2 seconds, it must zoom in 1.5 times. At the same time, I want the outermost layer of the SVG with ID full city to be hidden with opacity 0. Since it is in the same add function, these two transformations are performed at the same time. And of course, any transformations in the next ADD will take place after the actions in the previous ADD are completed. In the next transition, first I want the top of the building, with the ID building top to be moved up 200 pixels, then hidden with opacity 0. At the same time, the wall size will be moved to the left, and the wall front will be moved forward. Of course, both of these elements will gradually be hidden so that we can see the image inside the building. Once you understand how it works, it's easy to get a handle on it. By initializing an ID for each layer in the SVG, getting information and creating transformations becomes incredibly easy. And for the final animations, just like that, the walls on the left all move to the left, the walls on the top will move up. And the walls on the inside just hide it with opacity instead of creating too much confusing animation. So we have completed the setup steps to create the animation transition. Now we just need to attach this animation to the scroll event. Let's start by registering the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP. The timeline will no longer move by itself, but will instead move according to the config from the scroll trigger. The element used to trigger the animation scroll is the background city ID element, which contains the SVG. When the top edge of the element matches the top edge of the viewport, the animation will start. The animation will end at a position 1000 pixels from the start position. Scrub, when set to true, this creates a smooth effect, linking the scroll position to the progress of the animation. And finally, pin, when set to true, the trigger element will be held in place while the user scrolls through the specified amount of time. Explain more about the start position. The first top value represents the top of the background city element, and the second top value represents the viewport position. When the positions of these two points touch each other, the animation will start. And here is the random comment reply section. Your content is just going up exponentially. We want GSAP playlist. Thank you very much, and the answer for you is this video. However, we will need to survey the positive reactions from everyone about this video, such as the number of likes, comments, or subscriptions, to know if it is useful to everyone to make plans for the next videos. What theme are you using? I've been getting this question a lot. This is a custom design, so it doesn't really have a name. You'll find instructions on how to create it in the description of this video. Thanks for watching my channel. And last random question. We need more 3JS. I don't know if you've seen it, but I recently published a pretty cool video about the 3JS animation and it got a lot of positive feedback. And of course, I'm in the process of creating more videos on this topic. Thanks for your comment. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to watch many interesting videos about programming and web design. Thank you very much. See you again in the next interesting video. Thank you.